Search for carjacking suspects continues. County COVID cases up 231, 92% voter turnout in Sheboygan County. These are the headlines for Tuesday, November 10th, 2020. Those stories and more are just ahead on Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS-TV, news content provided by WHBL. Good day, I'm Scott Maloff. In our top story, two people are in custody after a pair of carjackings and a pursuit from Sheboygan to Ozaki County Monday night. A car had been stolen in the Manitowoc County earlier in the day, and the suspects tried to steal another one in Sheboygan, but the driver drove away from them. The suspects fired several rounds at that vehicle, but nobody was injured. Minutes later, a suspect pointed a gun at another woman taking a car from the 1300 block of North 15th Street. They quickly left Sheboygan, heading southbound on I-43. The vehicle that was stolen from Manitowoc was stopped when spike strips were deployed in the Belgium area. Two people jumped out of that car and fled the scene. K-9 Max from the Sheboygan Police Department searched the area for three miles, tracking down the 16 and 17 year old males who are now in custody. I-43 southbound had to be closed down for a time as drones helped sheriffs from Sheboygan and Ozaki counties search for the suspects. Sheboygan police are still looking for the other stolen vehicle, a 2015 Ford Edge SUV. It's red and has a license plate number 444DSW. If you know where it is, you should call Sheboygan police or Crime Stoppers. The coronavirus pandemic remains high in high gear in Wisconsin and Sheboygan County, though some trends are, at least for the short term, going in a better direction. Since Friday's daily update from the Sheboygan County Division of Public Health, new coronavirus cases were up 231 to 6,122 cases so far. With 286 recoveries in the same time period, active cases dropped by 55 to 1,947. Another four county residents were hospitalized with 35. 1.8% of county residents that contracted the coronavirus have needed hospitalization. And as 555 negative test results were received, the positive rate was just under 30%. During those three days, Wisconsin added 15,705 new cases of COVID-19, with 4,360 of those recorded Monday. Saturday saw a single day high of 7,065 new confirmed cases, eclipsing Friday's previous record of 6,141. With over 14,000 test returns in all, the positive rate on Monday was 31%. 17 more persons died since Sunday, putting the death toll at 2,329. 100 more persons were hospitalized in the last 24 hours. The hospitalization rate statewide is 4.8% of all coronavirus cases. The Wisconsin Hospitals Association reports a patient population of 2,003, 143 more than on Sunday. 396 of those are in the ICU. Another 293 persons were hospitalized and awaiting test results, and 567 persons are on ventilators. The Free National Guard community testing held Wednesdays and Fridays at the Sheboygan County Aging and Disability Resource Center in Sheboygan Falls will be closed Wednesday the 11th in honor of Veterans Day. It will be open this Friday but will also be idle on the Friday after Thanksgiving, November 27th. The county DPH is recommending advanced registration for anyone who is experiencing COVID-19 symptoms or who has had close contact with a known positive case. Testing is first come, first served and limited to 450 individuals for the day. Advanced registration can be done online at register.covidconnect.com .wy.gov. Odds are that you're experiencing stress on your personal finances. 
the National Endowment for Financial Education surveyed Americans and found that the COVID-19 crisis is causing such stress for nearly nine in 10 persons. The good news is that help is available from Consumer Credit Counseling Service in Sheboygan. The local nonprofit helps individuals and families maintain and achieve financial stability and improved quality of life. Clients are assisted in creating a budget, improving credit, avoiding evictions and foreclosures, and also help in dealing with student debt and unexpected expenses. If you find yourself in financial distress, manager Daryl Mangieri is urging that you don't delay in getting help, since some programs designed to weather the COVID-19 storm expire December 31st. Consumer Credit Counseling Service can schedule appointments by calling 458-3784 or at 800-350-2227. The personal battle with COVID-19 is different for each patient, and for some persons that means extended recovery period or long quarantine with skilled nursing care after discharge from the hospital. In response, Pine Haven Christian Community has announced the opening of a dedicated COVID-19 recovery unit for up to 14 persons on their Haven Drive campus in Sheboygan Falls. The self-contained unit will have its own staff and hospital partners, including specialized MDs. All employees there will be wearing appropriate personal protection equipment and work will be done in a negative pressure environment, equivalent to a hospital setting. Pine Haven's medical director, Dr. Brian DeMaster, says the move is an outgrowth of Pine Haven's faith-based community approach that tells them to care for those in need, and today that would include those with COVID-19 needing post-hospital treatment. The unit is scheduled to open on Thursday, November 12th. The City of Plymouth will present its proposed budget in a public hearing tonight at Plymouth City Hall. The plan for 2021 includes a $24 million operating expenditure from the Plymouth Utilities Enterprise Funds, as well as a $7.7 .7 million expenditure for community services and just over $1 million going to the Capital Projects Fund. Along with other items, the tax levy should amount to around $4.4 million. The hearing on the budget will take place during the Plymouth Common Council meeting at 7 p.m. at Plymouth City Hall. Unofficial results posted by the Sheboygan County Clerk indicate that 92% of eligible voters turned out for last Tuesday's general election. That's nearly 72,000 ballots cast. The lowest response was seen in the village of Adel and the city of Sheboygan, where 89% of those eligible cast their votes. The highest, 101%, was seen in the town of Russell, where 238 voters were registered before the election, but 240 cast votes. That could be explained by on-site same-day registration by persons not yet of record before Election Day. However, that has yet to be confirmed by the county clerk's office. There were only three provisional ballots reported in the county all three in the city of Sheboygan. That's all for this edition. Tune in next time for another recap of local stories on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV. Sir, good day. I'm Scott Maloff. In our top story,